Assisted death is illegal in Britain and the issue of whether or not to decriminalise it for people whose lives are unbearable is a matter of debate. Dignity in Dying is a campaign that supports the idea of terminally ill people having the right to decide when they die. It's, the campaign itself has been going for actually about 80 years. Um, it was originally set up as, um, with, well, Dignity in Dying's predecessor organisation was called the Voluntary Euthanasia Society, which was set up in 1935. Um, by Lord Moynihan, who was a very famous surgeon, and lots of other eminent philosophers, including people like Bertrand Russell and, and people like that. That was a, a call to legalise voluntary euthanasia. Um, that's, our organisation um, kept that name for many, many years, but in the last 10 to 15 years, Dignity and Dying has become an organisation of its own. We've, we've um, changed our campaign to become um, a campaign for uh, people who are terminally ill to have the right to decide when they want to die and we base that on what we've been seeing in other countries, um, particularly what's been going on in the USA. There are several states in the USA, including Oregon most notably, which have an assisted dying law for the terminally ill, and we believe that something like that should be implemented in this country too. About 82% of the population of the country believes that assisted death should be legal. In England and Wales, it's uh, currently against the law for anyone to assist someone to take their own life. Although suicide was decriminalised in 1961, when that was decriminalised, the law was changed to make it so that any person who assisted suicide could be in prison for up to 14 years in prison. Now, the law as it stands is, is quite cruel on that front. Uh, we think that someone who is helping someone out of compassionate motives to take their own life when they've expressed a clear wish to do so should not be criminalised for helping someone. The, uh, the law was clarified in 2009 after Debbie Purdy took a case to the House of Lords. Um, it now says the the Crown Prosecution Service has said that in most cases where it's a compassionate um, assistance given by a friend or family member or any other loved one to someone who wants to take their own life and has explicitly requested it, they are unlikely to be prosecuted. That doesn't mean it's being decriminalised, but it does mean that most people will not be prosecuted for helping someone to die. We don't think that's necessarily the right way forward. We think that's a good that's a good step forward for people who do assist uh, their loved ones to die. But what it means is that it's still illegal for, for instance, a doctor to help someone to die. With this sort of issue, um, it's important to have that certainty of a, of a doctor, not just in helping someone to die, but also to determine whether that person is terminally ill, whether they have six months or less to live, whether they are mentally competent, whether they're taking a decision um, out of sound mind and without any coercion or pressure. We think it's vitally important you have professionals involved in this sort of process, rather than leaving it to friends and family and loved ones to essentially take the law into their own hands. The call for a change in law actually came from the doctors themselves. It didn't come from members of the public so much or from parliamentarians, it came from the medical profession. So I think they are a big block in, uh, in the change in the law in this country. It's not only the politics that's coming in the way of legalising assisted dying. Lots of medical organisations are also guilty of not providing enough support. Something, something around 30 to 40 percent of doctors do support a change in the law but then 60 to 70 percent of doctors are opposed to it. So there is a big, there is a big uh, difference in opinions there. Unfortunately, the leaderships of, of lots of these uh, medical royal colleges and the British Medical Association um, have taken a decision to oppose assisted dying and not consult their members on, on the various opinions they have. Um, we saw earlier this year um, a documentary about Simon Binner, who, uh, who, who died, uh, I think, in October last year. So he died soon after the law was rejected in the House of Commons. Um, he was a man who um, had a very similar disease to motor neurone disease, who, um, who wanted to die and he found himself losing his, um, losing his ability to, to walk, to speak and all sorts of things. And he was, become, he was leading to a life that he found intolerable to him and he also knew that this disease would kill him. There was no doubt that uh, something like motor neurone disease will become terminal. Now, as a result, he had to investigate taking his own life in Switzerland, and we think it's, it's barbaric that someone who wants to take their own life because they are going to die, and they want to choose when and how they die, should be forced to travel to another country where they have a more humane law that allows them to make that choice. And we don't think that's, necess that's the way that this law should work. We think that people should be given the choice to take their own lives when they're ready, in their own homes, with friends and family around them, and have the death that they want, not have to travel overseas to die. As Stephen Hawking told the BBC, I think those who have a terminal illness are in a great pain and should have the right to choose to end their lives, and those who help them should be free from the prosecution.
A lot of people would regard it as straightforward murder, and I think that's the position that the government adopts. But obviously, if people are really terminally ill, are in severe pain, then there may be a very good case for giving them something to help them quietly slip away painlessly. I do not actively support it, but I think it should be legal. Not really, no, but on the other hand, if I were terminally ill, probably I would want to help that way. Yeah. I feel the same too. If I had a terminal illness where there was no cure and only death and pain, I would choose to end my life. Would you?